Alright guys, welcome to Season 3 of this AEK series. Now, when I left you last time, it was a very eventful episode. It was a very long episode. I hope you were sitting comfortably throughout that. But that, it was the conclusion of the season. Uh, and we managed to get Europa League football. Despite finishing dead last of the promotion playoff group, I think we were on two points. And the closest uh, any team were to us was a team on 10 points. So we were absolutely destroyed, but we still managed to um, make it into the Europa League. And uh, as I'll show you straight away, we've done all right in it. Okay, in the second qualifying round, which is where we entered the draw, we played a unknown Slovakian team called uh, Kosis um, in, the home, in the home leg, which was the first leg we took them out. 3-0. Goals from Tunis, Aravidis and Barbosa, the core of our attack, uh, dominated the game statistically, um, did well to get three goals to take into the second leg. The second leg was a lot more eventful, I think. I have took, uh, I put out a second string team just to rotate some people, get some match fitness going, and we almost fucked it up. As you can see, Liena, Somalani and Struber getting the goals for Cossis, making it 3 all on aggregate. Uh, despite us sending off in the 43rd minute, we couldn't create anything with our second string team. So it was up to Aravidis on um, 117 minutes in extra time to um, grab the winner in the tie and um, spare quite uh, extensive embarrassment for us. We then drew Bordeaux in the third qualifying round first leg. And um, this is one of the most surprising but just brilliant results I've ever had. On FM, yeah, it was Darko Zoric who first scored after he missed the penalty. He bagged the rebound in. Platelas with a hat trick, I believe one of them was his penalty, and Kolovestios on 63 minutes. And look at the stats as well. We deserved to beat them. We smashed them to pieces. Um, I'll never be able to get my head around that because Bordeaux statistically much better than us, but the scoreline suggested that we had totally outclassed them. Um, I was on the train as well. Um, when I was playing this game, I was just going absolutely mental, trying to contain myself, obviously, because I was in public. But it's hard to do when uh, your team turns out performance of that quality. I'm sure they understood that on the train. Then the uh, second leg of that game was a bit of a dead rubber over at Bordeaux's ground. Rotated some players, lost 1-0 to a penalty. 5-1 uh, on aggregate, though. Which means uh, Club Bruges were standing in our way between us and a place in the group stages of the Europa League. I never thought I'd be saying this, but uh, we are a game away from a group stage Europa League adventure. The first leg was a one-all draw. It was a pretty even game, to be honest, uh, statistically. 10 shots to 12. Pretty even possession, only 2% either way. Zazinho opened the scoring for us, surprisingly, after they battered us in the first 40 minutes or so. Uh, I got them out at half-time, told them to relax, and relax they did. Played their stuff. Zazinho grabbed the goal on 48, and we held out until 60, uh, until 6 minutes from time, uh, is Cuadro, um getting the goal on 84 minutes. So I will be live coming the second leg of that game against Club Bruges to see if we can go on a European adventure in the group stages. This is the first uh, live come of the new season, so uh, I'm going to show you some transfers, as well as last season's transfers as well, because this is how many uh, youth players... I ended up releasing. There was just so many players at the club. It was starting to seriously mess up the finances. I'm not even going to bother counting all these players, but they weren't very good. I'm not sure how many of them found new clubs. He hasn't. Yeah, I'm really not sure how many of them have actually found new clubs as of yet. Uh, but they all had to go, really. It was um, not sustainable to keep all these terrible youth players at the team. They were never going to develop into first teamers. Uh, this season I've released a few players once their contracts ran out. They never really featured for me so there's no point really going into that. I sold uh, Aris Salidis, um, a guy who was just complaining about a lack of first team football, to uh, AELK who came up to the Super League by uh, I think winning the um, second division last season. So maybe that's a, a team more suited to his level. Um, <laughs> and luckily for him, though, he seems to have a broken ankle, which is not the best start to the ALK career. Uh, loaned uh, one of my youth players uh, to Kakaira, I think. Um, they had a lot of young Spanish players on loan uh, last season, if I remember. They went on some pretty good form. Uh, beat us one or two times as well. So they're a decent team. The guy has 20 determination, so... Um, he's uh, he's he's on for 
uh, achieving his potential. Unfortunately, that's made it quite difficult for me to find a tutor for him, since anyone with um, lower potential than uh, the tutee uh, will obviously make his determination go down. Uh, I am going to look to see if I can improve some other mental stats there. Maybe his concentration isn't quite uh, as good as it should be. Coming in, uh, loads of youth players really, that's uh, the gist of it. I uh, bought this guy in, Vitless, a 16 year old shadow striker, already with 15 technique, uh, good work rate, he's a genius off the ball for his age, I think he'll develop into a fine player. Bought this guy in for 35k, um, yeah this is the goalkeeper I bought in, 13 handling and reflexes, not bad, he's got good core stats for a goalkeeper, his physical stats not the best, but we can train those fairly easily. Decent determination as well, so he should improve, and hopefully he'll develop into a good goalkeeper, and we can sell him on for a good profit. But this guy in, very versatile player, can play centre-back, striker, and two of the midfield positions. Uh, if he's got the status for it, I'll cheekily train him into a, an AMC as well, just to complete the um, just to complete the line. Uh, it says his best position is a defensive midfielder. I'd probably agree. And finally, this guy for 55k. Looks like a bit of an animal, doesn't he? Needs to work on his strength, though. Maybe needs to be a bit more aggressive. Get one of my um, more aggressive senior players to tutor him, perhaps. We've had uh, one game in the Super League so far. Uh, Tripolis uh, we played, and we absolutely smashed them 3-0. Uh, they dominated the stats again, but we took our chances. Kulavestios, Aravidis, and Tunis with the goals. That is uh, a wonderful result, considering we were really struggling against them last season. Uh, they smashed us in the playoff um, for European places twice. So they were clearly superior to us statistically still, but we were able to take our chances and they weren't. So I'm not complaining. Obviously that's left us first after one game, but that's a pretty irrelevant table. Um, good to see us on top of the league though, isn't it? Anyway, let's get into the Club Bruges game where we have a chance of making the Europa League group stages. Uh, we need to... Pick our best, most match fit players. Uh, Saris can come in. Saris? Well, no, Cialis is the better defender. I'm plagued a little bit by injuries and suspensions at the moment. Helder Barbosa, the left winger, is currently out. Uh, Kevin Conboy is suspended again. Again. So, Rapper, who's normally a right back, has come in on uh, in left back. He can do a decent job, but obviously it's not his natural position, so it's not ideal. And uh, Platelas is pretty much a ready-made replacement for Helder Barbosa, so that's all good. Uh, we're going to proceed to the match then. Pretty standard team. So we've got uh, Anistis, Rapper, Cialis, Colaviestos, Bakakis as the back line. Knas Milner and Zazinho playing in midfield with Zorich um, in the CAM role. Platelas and Tunis are on the wings, and Aravidis is up front. Uh, Nicholas Storm as well, you may remember him from season one. He um, obviously plays for Club Bruges like, as his parent club, so uh, he's ready to start for them now. Let's uh, hope he doesn't come back to haunt us. We should pick up where you left off, lads, and we should be good for the group stage. Come on, boys. God, I like straight away, I don't like that, but I do like the fact that Platelas has intercepted that, but Strandberg guy who I'm starting to fear in the centre of defence intercepts it. Colavestios, what's he doing? That could have been costly. So <sighs> Breathing a sigh of relief there. Bit of a brain fart in defence and it could have cost us a goal but now we have a free kick from the corner position and that's headed out, dealt with comfortably. Can we build on this? Can we just keep possession? That would be nice. Zazinho to Zorich and Tunis on the flank, delivers it in, I don't know who got their end on it, it was Aravidis, of course it was Aravidis, it's 1-0 to AEK, we're in the driving seat, we're at home, we have been in control of this game so far, which is encouraging to see, uh, it's Rapper now on the uh, left flank for a change, he's used to being on the right, Zorich to Tunis, that's straight at the keeper, disappointing finish, but we have been all over them, we just need to hold on to this lead, it would be great to be in the group stage. That would be... I love European adventures. I only really get to do when I um, pick a save with like really big clubs. Um, or really big clubs in the Europa League, like Spurs. I do love a Tottenham save. I don't know why. Anyway, 
Um, I'm going to go with a cautious team talk at this uh, stage. I'm going to tell them they need to keep their performance levels up because Club Bruges are a dangerous, dangerous opposition. We need to be mindful of that. And Tunis to Zazinho. Zorich at the kickoff. It would be so fitting if Aravidis would be the one to fire us into the Europa League group stages. But um, we can't uh, get hung up on that just yet. Zorich delivers it in. Zazinho gets his head on it. It's 2-0. Oh, it's offside. Okay. I feel like a bit of a dick now. It was an exciting moment. Let's make our... Oh, hang on. Let's wait for this highlight before we make our substitutions. Bukakis to Zazinho. Aravidis. Platelas. Cuts in. It's post. Is it? Is it in? Yes! It's not offside. I was worried then. I wanted to be careful rather than embarrass myself like I did a couple of minutes ago. But now we can make our substitution. Safe in the knowledge that we have a two-goal cushion here. Let's um, bring on Akoglu. I can't say his name. Not under this pressure. And uh, Cord No, I don't want to change the midfield too much. Um, what do I want to do? I'm going to keep it like this, actually. Okay, we're seeing out the game very well here. Just a couple of minutes away from the Europa League group stages. This is surely full time as Zazinho delivers it in. Debok just smashes it up. And we've got the win. And we are through to the group stages. Get in there, boys. We're ready for the Europa League group stage draw. We're probably going to get smashed in our next league game after that effort put in. But, um, you know, it's a European adventure. It's totally going to be worth it as long as I don't get sacked. I'm not going to get sacked. Oof, we're given 1.04 million for playing in the group stage. I believe you get a pretty hefty sum of money just for, like, drawing a group game as well. So... This is crucial for our finances. Here we go then. We are in the draw for the Europa League. Where are we seeded? We're seeded fourth. Of course we're seeded fourth. Alright. I think uh, we draw the first seeds first, don't we? Yes, we do. Let's just draw all these. Insane amount of groups in the Europa League. And uh, hand elector with Braga. Man City are in the Europa League. Crap. Whew. There are some pretty big teams in here. Napoli, Leverkusen, Marseille. Oh, I'm shitting my pants. PAOK -okay could be an on group. All right, the, T the uh, teams are drawn. Group A looks um, pretty nice. We just want a good European day out there, don't we? City, Stay or Ludogorets. That's just an easy group for Man City, isn't it? Liverpool, Twente and Roma. That's a group of death. So is PSV and uh, Marseille for Frankfurt. Should be more winnable. Anyway, let's get on with the fourth seeds then. Espanola in Group A. Grasshoppers are in Group B. Feyenoord in Group C. Legio in Group D. Astra Group E. Odegaard's team in Group F. Jablonek. Oh, God. So we're in one of these. Please don't be City. Ah, oh, Panathinaikos. We've taken that group. Oh, we've got an easy group. It's relatively easy anyway. That is a pretty good group to be in, if you ask me. We've got Lille, Metalist, Kharkiv, Bait, and us. Well, I, I, I don't know how well we'll be able to compete with these teams. I say it's an easy group, but it's just easy compared to what we could have had. We could have had City, Leverkusen, Lyon, Marseille. These aren't uh, such well-known teams. Um, we may underestimate them <laughs> if uh, we're not careful. So... It's going to be an interesting group for sure. No real big names, so hopefully we can progress and play at least one of the big names. But nevertheless, I'm just happy to be in the Europa League group stages. It's going to be a fun adventure, and I'm looking forward to joining up with you for that. Anyway, that's going to be it for this episode, guys. Take care of yourselves.